Those of you that have been longtime listeners to Five More Minutes, I apologize. My schedule got away from me, and I have rearranged my week, not just because of Five More Minutes, but I am committed to continuing to do this podcast because I need the reminder of the gospel, which is that God loves us. That's an overflow of who he is. We're in great need, and that need is met in Christ, and then we are drawn into his story. Continuing the series of book by book through the book, I'm looking at 1 Kings, which is a very sad book. It begins with the vestiges of the um, kingly reign of David, who was a man after God's own heart, which is very challenging for thoughtful readers of the scripture because of David's many mistakes. But the difference between Saul and David and David and Solomon and David and Rehoboam was David was always willing and able to return to the Lord, to repent. But the first few chapters of 1 Kings are very sad. You see the continuing fruit of David's passivity with his children. The book of 1 Kings is a lot like the book of Judges, but with additional details because the nation of Israel was so much more established and had such a centrally uh, located to government. You remember in the book of Judges, it was supposed to be functioning as a theocracy or church-state nexus, and it was not because they wanted a king like the other nations, which is a recipe for disaster. The beginning of First Kings is uh, largely about Solomon, who dominates the chap- uh, from chapters 2 to 11. One of the more famous stories about Solomon was his request for wisdom. One of the more lovely things that Solomon did was um, pray in chapter 8. This becomes sort of an eerie prayer, knowing that it's not going to go well for him forever. But he said in chapter 8, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth beneath, keeping covenant and showing steadfast love to your servants who walk before you with all their heart. Soon after this, uh, or soon before this, excuse me, Solomon builds the temple. But only a few chapters later, Solomon, through his affection for women generally and foreign women specifically, turns him away from the Lord. The kingdom is soon divided, which is an important part of understanding the scriptures. When Israel came out of the Exodus, it was but one kingdom. But at this point in their history, Rehoboam, Solomon's son, divides the kingdom through all sorts of folly. And the end of the book of 1 Kings is um, largely about the prophet Elijah, considered by many to be the most uh, powerful, compelling, profound prophet. Um, one of the things I had forgotten about Elijah's ministry was Ahab, who was an evil king, largely because of his wife Jezebel, repented because of Elijah's ministry to him. So throughout the book of 1 Kings, we see all sorts of themes that we see in the rest of Scripture, except they're played out, sometimes colorfully, sometimes sadly. Those themes all remind us of the gospel. Repentance is better than religion. Solomon and Saul and uh, other kings made these dramatic sacrifices, but turning back to the Lord emotionally and then intellectually in that order is more profound. And I say that because if we're going to learn why David is celebrated, one of the main things that we notice is how emotional and passionate that he was. Certainly intellect and our, our intellectual ascension to theology and belief is important, but the moving of our emotions, the movement of our emotions towards God is also important. And I think linked to that, linked to both of those things, is the fact that humility is more important than wisdom. There's a false dichotomy that you could perhaps hear that is implied, but that's not how I mean it. I simply mean a knowledge of our need for God, which is not the beginning of the gospel, but is essential, is more important than anything. Solomon, who is wise, perhaps one of the wisest humans ever, turned from the Lord And in part, it was his lack of humility before the Lord, his lack of emotional engagement as compared with his father, his lack of repentance even as he 
produced such incredible sacrifices. So the book of First Kings, though very interesting, a little odd in some places in the detail, and then the lack of detail. There are prophets that we don't know the names of. But anyway, the book of First Kings reminds us that God loves us. Reminds us that we desperately need his covenanting, steadfast love that Solomon prayed in 1 Kings 8. And that we get to turn to him knowing that he receives us, offers us that steadfast love in Jesus Christ. That's it for five more minutes. We will be back next week. Have a great week. Have a great week.